G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you from the Learn to Paint Academy. And we're going to do a really exciting project this week, one I've been looking forward to doing. It's of a waterfall uh, recently from Mount Tambourine in the Gold Coast. Let me show you the image here. And I was there after about a week of really heavy rain, and so there was plenty of water coming through the... Uh, so there was plenty of water coming through the waterfall there, as you can see. It was beautiful, lush and green. And uh, I think it makes for a really interesting scene for us to have a go at here today. We haven't done a lot of waterfalls in the past, but um, this one is particularly a good one. Okay, so to do step one, come down here to the palette. The first thing we need to do is we need to get a, uh, a color that we're going to do a very rough outline drawing with. So I'm just going to take my medium flat brush here. I've got a little bucket of water because I'm using water mixed with oils. And um, let's get some of the blue. Now, you don't, don't fuss about mixing up this color. Just, you know, mix up a dark. Of some description. I'm going to keep it slightly to the blue side um, because it's overall a fairly cool subject. Not a lot of bright warm tones in there so we'll keep it a little bit on the blue side. Now that's fairly thick paint there. That's no good for what we want here for our drawing so we need to thin that right down. So if you're using acrylics add water to your mix. You can see there about a little bit of water. That's far looser now than that mix over there. So just add a little bit of water just to thin it down to like ink-like consistency. If you're using traditional oils, add whatever thinner that you use. Like uh, if, you, if you thin your paint down with solvent, then just use that until you get a, a nice thin consistency. Um, but what we don't want, especially with oils, water mixable or traditional, what we don't want at this early stage is thick paint because uh, it'll make our lives more challenging later on. Now, if I just come back to the photo for a moment, and you can see looking at that, that you've got uh, only a handful of big shapes really. We've got the water area, we've got the rocks where the um, waterfall is breaking, then we've got that rock shelf, right, which is where the water's coming over, and then we've got the trees. So we've got really one, two, three, four big shapes plus the water coming down the waterfall, so five big shapes. And uh, if you start to think about your subjects like that, it just makes it so much easier. So um, let's just work on getting those in. So the obvious sort of starting point is to get the top of this shelf here and it kind of just comes down. That's where the water is breaking there and then it rises up a little bit there. And then we've got trees and things in here. So we'll come back to those. And then my orientation of my canvas is not quite the same as the, um, as the photo. So um, the water area here is going to be slightly less okay so we'll just reduce that down so then that's our rocky shelf in here that comes into a bit of a, a dark patch sort of up and through there and then in here we've got rocks that are exposed now those rocks here are on a different plane to what this shelfy area in here is so that's they're going to be slightly different tone and some of them will be catching light whereas this rocky shelf being a vertical plane isn't going to catch um, any light there right so i'm just putting in some sort of wedgy shapes in here for the larger rocks but don't overdo it and then our water is going to come cascading into here right. and so we need a couple of rocks just there where they're going to be breaking on just some rough shapes at this stage right don't have to overdo that uh, and then we've got foliage like we've got we need to create a little bit of depth in our foliage we're going to have one sort of big tree in here which overlaps those rocks there and then we've got those trunks coming up which look good so we've got that one there and then we've got another one sort of the, sitting in around about there okay so they're sort of like framing the rest of the foliage and then we're going to have other foliage in here which is going to be fairly abstract and nondescript so I won't put too much in there we'll just put down a, a dark green and then we'll add some lights over that and then there's some foliage sort of falling in through here as well yeah, so in step two we need to move towards getting our darkest darks in and our other dark tones and so on um, and you know get all the different big shapes there blocked in with the right sort of tone so to do that, I'm going to use, I'll switch to a big brush now. So we're not going to be looking to refine any of these shapes at this stage. It's just about getting the right tone and value in place. Okay, 
So we will take our blue, our red, and our yellow. We'll mix up what's called a chromatic black rather than a tube black. It's just mixing our three primaries together. Okay. And um, I find that's the best way to get a, uh, a really black sort of dark because then you can still control the temperature by making it warmer or cooler. So you can see that I've got that a little bit on the blue side, that mix, which means it's going to be a little bit on the uh, cooler side rather than a warm dark. I'm going to save my warm darks for the rocks. Okay, so we'll get more water into that. And let's just test to make sure that it's not too... No, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to lose that waterfall for the moment. Um, because we need to get the shadow tone underneath it, don't we? we put our water back over the top of this <coughs> block in, and that'll allow us to have some nice shadows in there. Okay, all this area in. Now again, I'm keeping this paint really thin. I just didn't mix up enough of it. Um, but it's really thin with lots of water in there. Okay, it's just the initial stage. We will paint back over this. We'll strengthen up these darks um, as we progress. You can see I've changed the tone slightly there just for a bit of variety. But we'll, yeah, we'll definitely come back in and strengthen up um, our darks in here. Notice I'm not fussing, I'm, I'm not worrying about going over the lines or anything like that. Uh, at this stage, it doesn't really matter. So, you know, break the lines up. That would be a little bit adventurous. And I'm just using a scrubbing motion just to get that paint into the tooth of the canvas. Okay, now this is a stage that some artists call the ugly stage. Because you know, when students who are maybe are fairly new to painting come along and do this stage, they start to get concerned that, um, that it's off track, right? But this is just the initial underpainting, if you like. And so, so that's a fairly well. Let me just go to the next step. So we we'll get some more of a rock tone here. We'll push it more to the orange side. Okay, it still wants to be dark. We don't want to get any too many light values in here just yet, so I've just mixed it in the dark we were just using. Okay, and let's just come in here and create that sort of warmish rock tone in there. Okay. So this is all our dark shadow tones. Now we're going to come into the greens. Of the tree so we know that this area in here as the underpainting is going to be a darker green so is this one and then we'll just do a light gray sort of green for the background there so i'll just swap brushes now you don't have to you could just wash that brush out but for the sake of filming i'll um just make it a little bit easier or a bit faster so i'll get a new brush a little bit of water and now i'll come into some blue i'll mix a little bit into that tone just to gray this mix back Yellow ochre. Okay. And we should have a darkish bluish green is what we're working towards. Something like that there. It's definitely different from the mix we were using before. And again, I just want to stress this is our underpainting. It's not our final colour and tone here. Okay, so What's important though is you just let those edges be a little bit sort of rainforesty tree shapes. Now there's no real sky, no there's no sky, we're right in the middle of the rainforest here with this one. So um, don't leave gaps for the sky. Try and get those interesting little shapes. Now notice I'm not really trying that hard to get them. <laughs> it's just how I'm twisting the brush and I'm using an old crusty brush. Don't throw out your old brushes. They're great for doing trees like that and they're good for blocking like we're doing right now. Okay, a little touch of blue. 
we want to create like a misty atmosphere in the background okay so we're deviating a little bit that's too dark and then it looks lighter on the palette i put it up there and it's just not a big enough jump for me to um to create depth so i'll lighten it off and we'll try again uh, that's better it could still be a touch lighter though couldn't it so this is one of the things i always say is you've got to work out the mix that you think is right on your palette but then you've got to come in here and you got to test okay so only through that testing step and com comparison that you can work out if you actually got it right and that's still it's not bad um i'll, I'll run with it and we can uh, adjust it during step three if we need to so now it's just a matter of just working up to the edges here just being careful i don't dirty this brush with the darks I've already put down okay a little bit won't hurt but I just don't want to drag the dark into the area that's supposed to be a bit lighter background foliage done so now we need to come in here and get in our water just block in that whole water area and I think for that um, I'm gonna shift the tone a little bit from what it what it is uh, in the picture okay so I'm going to make it a little bit more vibrant so can't have it too blue like it's reflecting the sky because it just probably isn't <laughs> but we'll get a little bit sort of bluey green tone and it needs to be light a light value so we've got nice light there against the dark of the rocks let's just see what that's like yeah that's good I don't mind that it's often hard to gauge the uh, tone with waterfall type scenes okay now I'm going to keep it light at the back and I'm going to make get a little bit darker in value as it comes forward towards us just a bit of a gradient and folks if you haven't done so already make sure you go to the learn to paint academy you can google us find us on google learn to paint dot academy and um, check out all the different courses we've got a couple of free courses there you can take and check out all the other courses that we have there as well which will um, help you paint had more than 35,000 people come through one of our courses so far. So I've just gone on slightly darker, a little bit more blue into it. And don't try and blend it too much. Notice I haven't really blended any of those different layers just yet all i'm doing is just getting the paint down and the blending is done best with a once you've got it all in horizontal bands like that okay, so now i've got that down and what i'll do is i'll get some paper towel and i'll just clean out that brush a little bit so i don't have to clean it completely i just need to pull out some of the excess especially if there's a bit of water in there or a bit of solvent if you're using solvent just pull a little bit of it out and then I can just come in and just soften any parts out here and blend them in that require it well folks that brings us to the end of step two now at this stage if you're new to watching our um, program or courses and so on um, you can look at that and go wow that's just never going to turn into a painting right it just doesn't look right I just want you to keep in mind that what we're doing is really getting in all these shadow tones that sit behind a lot of the layers that we're, we're going to add on to it so um, we need to let that dry off let our darks all dry and we'll come back in step three now in step three that's where we slow down and we start to now mold and shape and render each of the different um, elements within this painting so that's where we slow down take our time work on our details put some highlights in and a few finishing touches and you wait this painting will come together quite nicely and um, 
it'll turn out to be a great little painting. So, um, you know, designed for a beginner to have a go at. And if you're at home watching this and you've only just started painting, um, please watch this again and follow along and you'll surprise yourself at you know, how using the more method of painting will help you to do a great painting. I'm gonna let this dry off. Might take half an hour to an hour and then I'll come back and we'll have another go and we'll finish it off in step three. We'll see. Uh, rock area. So we'll get the water in for the waterfall and um, some of this rocky area in here in this uh, rock face. We'll start to get that established. Now in terms of getting that water, the water has a shadow to it as well as um, as well as the highlight of the water, right? So I'm going to just build up a shadow tone, which is going to be mostly white with a little bit of blue and red to it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a big flat brush. I'm just going to load the tip of it up. So I've got like a little bead of paint just across that tip there. And I'm going to come here. The water is going to come this way down. Now, I don't know if this is too light or not. Let me just do a test. It's probably going to look light. No, it's okay. Um, so I'm just going to drag it lightly so that some of that shadow underneath is also um, coming through. That's an important part of it, right? Is to get that shadow underneath coming through. And we're going to leave a little bit of a rock there. And then we'll just bring this part in through here. And don't overwork this. Big key, right? A little bit of a splash up there. Um, we do not want to overwork the water in the waterfall. So at the moment, we're just doing the shadow part of it. And um, we will add in a highlight over that. But we'll do this first so that this paint has a chance to just settle down before we um, before we come in with the highlight tone. And then really, it hits the water here and it goes horizontal somewhere in there. So get your water looking roughly like that. Don't let it get too big. Um, and notice that I've got the plenty of that shadow tone underneath coming through. That's, that's a big key to getting this to look right. So we'll leave the water alone for now. Actually, there's just one other little bit I'll do. I'll just scoop up another chunk there. And I'll just strengthen that up in here. Okay. Just a little bit. Actually, while I think of it, I'll just light up a little bit more, not too much paint, but the shadow that's running, or the reflection rather, that's running down through here is, uh, it's not a highlighted tone, it's mostly sort of a bluey gray. So I'll just run some of that in, just so we capture that. <laughs> and you can see that that's a little on the blue side, but certainly getting darker. So let's just test that with a little bit of oil. Take some of this paint. No, it's still looking a bit yellow, which I think is in the brush. So getting the mixes as close as we can on the palette here is important. You know, we tend to rush the mixing part of it, but really I think more painting occurs down on the palette than it does um, up on the canvas. But I think as we beginners, we don't see that so much. Now, there is a fair bit of foliage just falling in here, which is creating a highlight. So I'm, I'm going to just get this darker tone in here. Okay, there's a little bit in there. Now, that's fairly thick paint. Um, and then right down and through underneath here, there's this, uh, the rock sort of overhangs and it creates this really nice ridge of shadow in there, which probably isn't conveying that well on the um, camera just yet but when we get the other lights and things in then I, I think it'll start to make sense um, and there's kind of a, a little bit of a underneath of a rock face there there's darks in through here so I'm just strengthening up now is what we're doing is putting some accented darks in there's another one kind of about there, although I don't know how much of that we'll use. Uh, like so. So I'll just pop that aside. I'm going to use my palette knife for the next part, which is getting in uh, more of a grayed off tone. So I'll take this water tone and I'll mix it over here. Okay, and we'll just get a lighter gray. 
too light, so I'll just keep pulling. This is, this is why I mixed it over here next to this dark tone that we've just put in. Okay. And get a little bit of that red, which is dry, but I can scrape a bit of that in. Uh, maybe a touch more red. Yeah, that's looking good. So now, see I've got paint all over the knife there. That's not a good starting point for what we're about to do. I'll just pull, pull the knife clean on the paper towel and then I'll come in here and I'll just scrape up a ribbon of paint there right, on the edge. And um, so we're going to have foliage in through there. So we want to have this tone sort of appearing around about here and then running in through there. And if it breaks up a little bit, that's perfectly fine. That's actually a good thing. I'll just soften that edge in there a little. And again, this is going to be a little bit hard to see until I get the lighter tones in. So just sort of stick with it and um, you'll start to see it all come, come to life soon. Okay. And again, I'm not painting all of that underpainting out. It's still there and it's still playing a pretty important role in all this. Okay. Okay. So I've taken the bluey shadow tone of the water and I've pulled in the dark and a little bit of that red. So I'm just using the mixes we already had. How good's that? Right? <laughs> so we don't have to fuss too much. Let's get in, make sure we've got a nice rock face there and a bit of a one there in there establish the top of it there a bit of a rock face and there's also a little bit of a one there which i kind of missed before but it's just sitting up a little bit higher there and then here we can start to build that across green, chunk of the yellow ochre, little touch of red, actually that was a big touch of red so it's not quite what I wanted, punch a bit more green into it, a bit of white, Now there's foliage in here and how we paint it is um, I've got the brush loaded up with paint and notice how I'm holding it down the end here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place that there and just drag, do little drags of foliage because I want to make sure that the paint breaks up and I really pick up on the, um, on the shadow underneath coming through. But as I do it, I'm going to pick up that wetter paint, especially that really thick dark that I've done. So I just need to uh, keep the brush clean if I do pick up paint, the darker paint. Otherwise it's just going to kill my greens off, right? Um, put a few little marks over there. So that's that bit of foliage there. There is a couple of other little touches of foliage down and around here. I'll indicate a couple of little bushes in there. And... Let's just try this, creating some foliage, catching the light on the edge of this foliage here. And 
And don't overdo the light in here because it's a rainforest and we're down in sort of like a valley here. So not everything's catching light. Notice how I've sort of smudged it back so there's not too much thick paint on there. Whereas over here I've got it a little bit thicker. I could just knock some of it back so it doesn't jump forward too much. I don't want it to compete with the water, even though we haven't got our highlighted water on there yet. But we don't want the um, foliage to be in competition with the water there. So we'll just adjust the tone ever so slightly. A little bit of yellow ochre and red. Okay. But we're just going to push it up a little, a little higher in this uh, brightness stakes, but not too much. A subtle little shift, okay. And with that subtle little shift, we can now come in here and we can start to build up this foliage. Just work that brush around. I'm twisting it. I'm turning it right, um, and I want to get these interesting edges out in here. Okay, and then. So it's going to be lighter out on these edges and then we're going to fade it off into a darker blue into the shadows there so we'll come in with more blue okay and just scrub it and again notice that the original tone that we had there is still there. The underpainting, that blocking tone that we put down, it still exists. It's not as dominant as it was because we're painting layers over it, but it's still there. Okay. okay, so now we need to go backwards in distance. I'm going to brush a little bit of clean. We'll pick up another one. And um, I really need to now come up with a green that's going to be far enough in the distance here but not look pale and sickly, right? So it's going to be a greyish green. I'll take a little bit of the phthalo just to expedite the process of mixing the green. But we need to get all three primaries into this so that we have it greyed off. Okay, so if you don't understand what I mean by that, um, when you mix two, you know, like a blue and a yellow, two primaries, you get a, a green. But if you then start to add the third primary, which is the red, uh, then you get something that is uh, moving grayer, less saturated. So if you don't understand all that, it's worth then studying um, color mixing theory and so on. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lighten that back a bit. I'm going to add more blue to it. So I'm lightening the value, but I'm also cooling the temperature of it. And again, that's about understanding aerial perspective. That's better. If it's too warm, too much of that yellow coming through, it's not going to look like it's in the background. Okay. And I'm keep going to keep this quite abstract in here. We'll put in a few tree trunks and things. Um, However, take a little bit of that mud colour as well. Look at that. Um, but we're not going to put a lot of detail in the background here. Next logical step for me, I think, is we build up the water area in here. I'm not going to do too much, just going to strengthen that colour. It's a little bit dark and murky, um, so we'll just pick that up a bit. And um, I need a little bit more punch in the colour, a little bit off with my blocking. So let's see if we can't just step it up a bit. Let's try that. Again, I've made a mix, but I really need to come up here now and just test. And so that's fairly, um, I don't mind that as a tone, it's sort of showing a little bit of shallow. You know, reflecting a little sand at the bottom. But notice I'm going to leave some gaps of the original colour to come through. Don't, don't just paint that out. Utilise. Okay. Run 
run it up against the bottom of that rock so that it blurs in. So that original blocking was very thin, so um, the canvas is still dry and thirsty. Okay, so looking good. I think a little bit more phthalo green and yellow, cadmium yellow light probably work. It'll reflect, it'll echo some of the greens up in there. So um, just a few little spots of that. Something around about there. So let's just try that. So I've got my little rigger brush here. Okay, I'm going to dip it into the oil, swish it around so I load up the tip of this rigger brush. The, the, these rigger brushes are generally used for um, watercolour, uh, but they go great for this sort of application. Okay, but you will need a little bit of oil in there, or water, using acrylics to get the paint to move, right? Um, so about here so it disappears there another one slightly different angle now, you've got to be really careful we don't overdo this it, it, this is a sort of a for some artists the part that they think is the fun is they're putting the details on like this so you've got to be real careful that you don't overwork those details and really what I'm working at here is just trying to get a hint of um, the detail rather than overstating any of the details it's going to try and shift that tone by picking up some of the darker tones there there's a um, I'll run it down through here Kind of like a viney it's sort of growing out of that muddy embankment which is why I put the muddy embankment there before just so we could put that in easily and a couple of more minor ones in get into the highlight of the um, lower rocks so I'm going to mix up a warmer lighter orange still not you know really bright but brighter than what's already there something like that I'll switch to the other palette knife actually um, this one's got a little bit more flex in it and we can just pick up a piece of it like so um, so what I'm thinking is we just have this whole face here exposed well when I say exposed what I really mean is catching light don't I um, that's really what it's doing Starting to carve out some of the edges there of the um, rocks. Starting to get there. So our sort of uh, grandiose step is getting pure white. Just a little subtle hint of the cadmium yellow. Look at a little pin prick of it there, right? Mix that in. 
because that all brings the sunlight into the water. Okay, but you've got to be careful we keep this paint really pure. So I'm going to just pull the paint out of the knife with paper towel. So I've got it clean, and that way I can control what I pick up. Okay, so you can see what I've got there. And now with this, there's a line that sort of comes through there with the highlight and then along there. So what I want to do is just get this water Just ever so slightly merge it in. I will soften that with a brush. And we've got it coming over from that side as well. Okay, and then we've got it in here. Got a little bit of a splash up. And across there. Now, when you soften that in, you've got to be real careful because we don't want to just work that back into the wet paint that's underneath it, do we? Um, a little bit of splash out there, but just a hint of it. That's a little bit better, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think we've got it to a point where, you know, it tells the story. Uh, obviously there's more that can be done to it, and then I'll leave that to your discretion as to whether you want to, you know, do more work on it. But I think we've got it to a point where, you know, it's got a nice little um, rainforest scene. We've got a waterfall crashing down. And, uh, and we've done it the way that, you know, it doesn't matter what your experience level is. You can have a go at this one. And uh, you can do a really good job with it. Well, folks, there you go. There's our Mount Tambourine rainforest waterfall. And um, I think it's come up reasonably well. And again, I just want to stress that if you're a more experienced painter, don't stop where I'm stopping really dig into the details and, and start to pull this one out um, but because I want to keep it suitable to all levels we'll stop right there but I think it's come up a nice little you know um, rainforesty waterfall scene and um, anyone can do what I've done just follow along with the program and uh, learn the process we've used the three-step process of the more method of painting three colors three brushes three steps and um, simplifies it right down. We've had 35,000 people around the world who have come to the Learn to Paint Academy and taken our free uh, online course. So I'm gonna invite you to do the same. Underneath me here, you'll find a link to the Learn to Paint Academy. Go there, look for the free course and uh, register yourself for the free course and um, learn more about the approach that we teach. And there's four different full length painting demonstrations there for you. And I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Until then, happy painting and uh, see you next week.